In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. Us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We adore you uh, for your amazing love, amazing grace that you've given to us through this word of God study. There's nothing which we can compensate, which we can replace other than your word. Lord, we thank you for this word which you which you which is sustaining us in the last 888 days. Lord, we never thought that such a such a beautiful uh, gift that you would bless us with. Lord, you it is nothing else but your grace, not by our effort, not by our uh, plan, but by your power, O oh Lord. We trust in you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading and guiding us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I have a, I have a you know a small presentation uh, which I would like to uh, share with all of you. Uh, so let me, yeah. Can you all uh, see my screen? Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it is. Is it clear now? Yeah. It is clear, but solid food is for the mature. Ah, correct, 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 correct. Yeah, yeah. So this is a uh, presenter's view, right? Yeah. So this is uh, yeah, solid food is for the uh, for the correct. This is what you are seeing, right? Solid food. Yes. Now we have gone to God lives in. Yeah. Oh, I think that okay right now so the uh, the reason why i put this slide uh, is uh, uh, i didn't intend to i didn't intend to uh, you know share this uh, uh, particular uh, point uh, today uh, but i was as i was preparing uh, i felt i should read uh, you know to refresh my memory and i happened to read the first book of volume 1 of uh, volume 1 of the uh, you know uh, of uh, say, Luisa Picaretta's book. And there I just, uh, what is that? Book of Heaven. Yeah. Book of Heaven, correct. Book of Heaven. And I just was glan I was glancing through it and I found uh, two important points which I find uh, is very, very, uh, very uh, solid uh, as well as, uh, uh, you know, uh, important for us uh, to uh, accept it and uh, practice in our life. And, and this is not something which we can probably uh, tell to uh, to a beginner, uh, in the sense, people who are drinking milk. The Bible distinguishes two types of spiritual maturity: people who drink milk and people who have solid food, who eat solid food, right? So in the in morning, home, to be your presence and minister to you. Pardon? We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we will be gathered to one by the Holy Yeah. So the Bible distinguishes the spiritual people in two levels. One is people with uh, the uh, people who drink the milk and people who uh, have solid food. So uh, today the question is uh, this to us. Uh, are we people who eat solid food? Okay. And who are such people? So solid, pe solid food is more for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. With 888 days of spiritual input, of word input, I think it will be appropriate for us to call ourselves uh, people who eat solid food rather than uh, drinking milk. If we call ourselves the people who drink milk, I think I don't know whom we should call who eats uh, solid food. So I, I wanted to share these two key messages uh, this evening uh, from the Divine Will. And as I was preparing this, I came across two uh, very short videos, uh, which uh, uh, which uh, you know uh, confirms uh, these messages. Uh, it was very random videos which I came across, and I wanted to show that as well. The importance of these videos and the messages, and how how people look at uh, you know the spiritual walk um, uh, uh, differently rather than on a regular regular uh, you know way of uh, looking at things right so that is what i wanted to uh, share with you all now uh, 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 luisa picarata 
uh, had this uh, uh, amazing experience uh, after once she uh, after she received the holy communion uh, she uh, felt uh, she lost consciousness and she saw and and this is what she writes in the book i lost consciousness and i saw present before me the most holy trinity whom i had seen in heaven i immediately prostrated myself at their presence so she received the holy communion and she lost consciousness consciousness and she she saw herself before the most holy trinity i immediately prostrated myself at their presence i adored them i confessed my nothingness i remember that i felt so plunged within myself that i did not dare to utter a single word when a voice came from their midst and said do not fear pluck up courage we have come to confirm you as our own and to take possession of your heart and this is what she heard in in her in that vision she heard the voice of god telling her do not fear pluck up courage we have come to confirm you as our own and to take possession of your heart while this voice was saying i saw that the most holy trinity descended into my heart and took possession of it and there they formed their dwelling this is very important while this voice was saying this i saw the most holy trinity descended into my heart and took possession of it and there they formed their dwelling who can tell the change that occurred in me i felt it divinized it was no longer who i who lived but they were living in me it seemed to me that my body was like a residence that the living god was residing in it because i could feel sensibly their real presence in my interior i could hear their voice clearly coming from within my interior and resounding at the ears of my body it happened precisely as when there are people speaking inside a room and their voices can be heard clearly and distinctly also outside this is her experience when she received communion she went to do a trance she had a vision where she was uh, shown the presence uh, of the holy trinity and the uh, and the holy trinity god spoke to her and uh, said we have come into dwell we have come to dwell in you and she felt the lord coming into her heart and she felt uh, she could feel sensibly the presence of god in her heart and then she writes this for from that moment i no longer had the need to go in search of him somewhere else in order to find him but i could find him there inside my heart in fact this is exactly the mess- the, the point which uh, which really struck me today from that moment on i no longer had the need to go in search of him somewhere else in order to find him but i could find him there inside my heart i wanted to pause here and ask this question to each one of us every mass that we attend we have the same act or the same uh, act of receiving holy communion as luisa picarata probably had received that day and we may not we might not have had the vision or experience of luisa but in literally the presence of god is the same who had revealed to luisa that they come and dwell inside of our heart are we conscious about that presence of god in our lives that is what are going to make the whole difference in our spiritual walk 
we do so many things spiritually we do pray we pray we read the word all these things are excellent but the most important thing is do we have that awareness that consciousness in our lives every moment of our lives that the living god is present inside of me i will i will give you an analogy now i can i can see jude okay i can only see jude in the screen now i cannot see anybody else because i can see jude jude just came into the screen now he just opened the screen and he came to me otherwise i could not see him when i am in the presence of jude i am more aware of the things that i should do when than in his absence which means if nobody is or jude is not around me i probably would behave a little more differently than me, my my than in the presence when i am i am in the presence of jude so which means jude can see what i do when i am doing something in his presence so in our life when we really look at it we sometimes behave in such a way that that god is not able to see us god is not in us god is blind or we are not in the presence of god these these acts lead us to move away from the presence of god in our day to day life so which means a matured christian a man a woman who eats a solid food first and the most important thing that we need to probably look at is to bring in the awareness of the fact that the living presence of god is inside of us we keep running to churches we keep running to um, uh, you know the spiritual um, uh, places for devotion sector etc all those are fine but we are forgetting the fact we are forgetting the fact that the living god is living inside of us that presence that awareness can really change bring in a huge change in our lives in our attitude in our in our uh, interaction with others in our devotion to god in our thinking in our gestures in our emotions a huge differences that can be brought into when once we consciously become aware of the fact that god is living inside of us you know saying uh, you know when when you really when you really uh, look at uh, you know uh, look at the lives of the saints none of them have done or rather very few of them exceptionally did uh, you know great uh, things for the lord in the sense of uh, miracles and uh, signs and wonders but a lot of them lived an un uh, i would say unknown life you know saint alphonse for example when her you know her funeral were attended uh, by some 8 or 10 people nobody knew her but she knew god and god knew her so that intimacy you know that intimacy is something which is so important for us to uh, live in we need to you know, i i i am not i am i'm really struggling with that let me let me tell you that i'm struggling with that but of late the lord is pushing me to that uh, you know to that awareness to be aware of the fact that god is alive in me in me in me inside of me inside of me that is that is why that is why uh, you know uh, the lord uh, revealed to uh, louisa that you are the living tabernacle jesus came and quickly told me this this is what louisa says you are my tabernacle being in the sacrament for me is the same as you being in your heart in you i find something more i am able to share my pains with you to have you with me a living victim before divine justice which i do not find in the sacrament see was see the difference in the holy sacrament god is present there is no doubt about it god is fully present in the holy sacrament 
But when the same God is present inside of us, he ha is having a fellowship. You understand the difference? The difference between uh, you know, our body as a living sacrifice and the monstrance as a as as a tabernacle or God's presence. Mm -hmm. huh? no, God's know. presence. Oh, yeah. God's presence is this. When God is present in us, the living tabernacle, there is a communi there is a there is a communion that Lord is Lord is having with us. That can happen only once you are, once we are. Aware of his presence. When I am aware of somebody's presence, I long to have that fellowship with that person. But when I am aware, when I am not aware of the person's presence in my life or wherever I am, I rather live like as that person does not exist. So Jesus comes into our life every day through the Holy Communion as we receive. He is already present in us. The, the, we see that in the in the Gospel of um, uh, John, Father and I will come and make home in you, and we will we will we will we will you know uh, we will remain in you. So that awareness we need to be we need to constantly uh, you know uh, practice. We constantly need to practice that God is aware of it. This can have. Huge impact in different areas of your life, of our life. Sometimes I practice. I'm not saying that I don't practice it at all, but sometimes I practice, and I can I can really feel a huge difference, especially when it comes to you know uh, committing sins in my heart, especially when I judge others, when I say something bad about others, when I'm so tempted, I kid I I suddenly remember God's presence in my heart. When I wanted to judge somebody, judge, judge somebody, I suddenly feel God's presence in my heart. Then I stop. You know, many of many times we fall into the sin is because we are not aware. We think that nobody is watching us. Unconsciously, that is happening. You know, unconsciously, you know, we are not uh, we are not aware of the presence of God in our lives. So we probably have to write it somewhere and keep it. And 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 I don't know how, but you we need to constantly remind ourselves that the Lord is present in our in our lives, and He looks forward to that intimacy and that communion. I wanted to share one video with you, which I came across very short video of a man who's been preaching, who's been praying to God, uh, you know, to give me this and give me that. But uh, and he heard the voice of God, and this is what uh, God told him, and that changed his life completely. Okay, and this is uh, you can see the video, right? Yes, yes. I had been praying and I was like, God used me to cast out demons. God used me to win multitudes of Jesus. And that's the way I pray every day. And one day the Lord said, your prayers are off target. I said, what? He said, son, you can cast out devils, heal the sick. You can win multitudes of Jesus and end up in hell. I said, what? He said, Judas cast out devils. Judas healed the sick. Judas left everything to follow me. Judas is in hell. I said, what should I be praying for? He said to know me intimately. So all my prayers started changing. And my prayers started changing. God, I want to know you. I want to know you the best a man can know you. I want to please you the best a man can please you. And I stopped praying to win nations to Jesus. And I was praying, God, I want to know you. I had been praying and I was like, God used me to cast out demons. God used me to win multitudes of Jesus. And that's the way I pray every day. And one day the Lord said, your prayers are off target. I said, what? He said, son, you can cast out devils, heal the sick. You can win multitudes of Jesus and end up in hell. I said, what? He said, Judas cast out devils. Judas healed the sick. Judas left everything to follow me. Judas is in hell. I said, what should I be praying for? He said, to know me intimately. So all my prayers started changing. And my prayers started changing. God, I want to know you. I want to know you the best a man can know you. I want to please you the best a man can please you. And I stopped praying to win nations to Jesus and I was praying God I want to know you 
I've been... See, see, when you really look at it, you know, we've been going to church, we've been going for mass, we are doing prayers, we do so many things, but we sometimes miss the bus. We really miss the bus. That is going to be very, very sad. What is the level of intimacy that we, which we have? And this is exactly what Louisa is telling us also. God is not a distant God who is only present in the sacrament, not only present in, 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 you know, in our uh, prayers, in our, uh, you know, in our spiritual practices. No, he's present inside of us. That awareness we need to constantly, uh, be, should be brought into our lives. You know, what, what do you want to say something, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this reminds me of an incident in uh, the life of uh, St. Philip Neri. Ah. Uh, he, uh, he used to preach in his, uh, in his parish. Uh, there was a, a very influential, well-to-do well -to -do businessman. And uh, he would leave the church immediately after receiving communion. So he told them once or twice, uh, see, you're receiving Jesus. You should not be leaving. You sit down, talk to him, spend some time with him. Jesus wants to talk to you. He has come into you. Don't just go away to your work like that. Oh, no, Father, I'm so busy. I don't have time to. No, you have to sit. He, after saying two or three times, when he did the same thing again, uh, St. Philip Neri sent two altar boys with candles to follow him. <laughs> you know, in those days, so as he left the church, he didn't notice for some time. These altar boys were following him with candles. Suddenly he looked around and said, why are you coming behind me? He said, no, father has asked us to come. Then mm. he came back. Mm. <laughs> because in the streets of Rome, you, when somebody is walking and, and two altar boys are walking with candles behind them, it becomes a big sight. So he went back. And then after the mass, he said, uh, father, why did you do like this? He said, I've been telling you, Jesus is coming to you. Mm. So spend some time with him. Jesus wants to talk to you. Spend some time with him. Mm. Then after that, he stopped doing He used to wait till the yeah. mass was over. <laughs> yeah, I, I too have heard this, uh, you know, particular incident of St. Philip Neri doing this. In fact, uh, another incident which I heard from about Philip Neri is that he was so much in love with God and uh, he, God gave him a Mm, anointing of uh, the anointing of love the uh, uh, the the you know love anointing which means like uh, uh, like many other anointings that we we say he had a very special he received a special grace from god uh, to experience his love in his uh, in his heart and it exploded in him inside of him and one of the ribs one of the ribs in his uh, you know around the heart um, broke and he lived with that broken rib rest of the life. He could not contain that love of God. It was so overwhelming that broke the ribs, one of the ribs around his heart. And he lived in that, uh, you know, with that broken rib the rest of the life. So, so basically, so what we, what we are trying to, you know, uh, tell, share with each one of us, including me, is the fact that be aware, be present about God's presence in our life. God is not a distant God. God is a God is a God who lives inside of us. He's so close to us. He is uh, He. So we as uh, matured Christians, I wanted to use this word matured Christians because 888 days have gone by hearing the word of God. We as matured Christians should be aware of the fact that God is present in our lives. We should live in that life, in that present, that awareness, so that we can move to the next level. So once we have that presence, then we, 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 we walk differently. Then only we can walk differently. We cannot walk differently without the, uh, being aware of the presence of God. When we, we, we are, we could be, there could, there are two types of, uh, you, know, you know, you know, walking. I mean, just for the sake of discussion, two types of walking. One is when you walk, when you, you are a man of prayer, you are a man who follows a certain discipline, certain, you know, spiritual discipline. That is good. But outside that spiritual discipline, how is your life? 
that is going to be the biggest differentiator. Okay, to get into spiritual dis discipline is a big thing. But after outside of that spiritual discipline, how is your life? That is what's going to make the, you know, the that is going to be the differentiator for us. So are you aware? Are we aware of the presence of God? So which means our spirituality is a 24-hour spirituality, not a you know a part-time spirituality where we 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 become spiritual when we pray or when we attend the sac sacraments. No. We are ours is a 24 hour spirituality where we are always in the presence of God, talking to God, doing things for God. That's what the Bible says in, I think, in Colossians. Do everything for Christ. Do everything as if you're doing for Christ. So we we are we need to mature into that level, a, a level where we, we should be the living a tabernacle for God. Hmm? So, so I was just thinking how, uh, how this uh, you know the forefathers like the Abraham, Jacob, and I, Jacob and Isaac, and all these uh, forefathers, you know, how they lived, and uh, they probably had faith, has had fallen, but each fall, they bounce back, they bounce back, and that's why in Hebrews we see, God was not ashamed to call them call call himself as their god right so this is uh, this is a very important uh, you know uh, aspect of our spiritual walk we need to really look at we need to really look at uh, where we stand at this point in time in our spiritual in our, in, in our spiritual walk right so uh, so that is the first point i wanted to uh, share with you Anybody else wants to say anything in that? Okay, yeah, Joy, Joy has put, whatever you do, work it all with your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Even in our thinking, even in our words, everything, okay? So this is this is something which is this God's grace, but then I think we, sh we can, we should desire this in our lives. That is the first and foremost uh, thing that we need to do. The second point uh, that I wanted to uh, bring uh, to your uh, attention is this. Let me just share uh, my screen. Second point is this, is about the uh, beauty of the cross. Now, when it comes to cross, the gen general tendency of even spiritual people is to run away. Nobody wants to embrace cross. Okay? All of us are rather 99% of the people, if you really analyze the reason why you come into prayer life is to get rid of the cross that is there. There is nothing wrong in, wrong in praying to overcome the cross. But let us listen to what Jesus told Louisa, which is very, very, very uh, beautiful. She, uh, she had a, she had a, you know, she, Jesus, this is what Jesus told her. Other times I remember that in renewing this crucifixion, my sweet Jesus would say to me, my beloved, the cross allows one to distinguish the reprobates from the predestined. The cross allows one to distinguish the reprobates from the predestined. Who are the reprobates? People who are reprobates. The word meaning, uh, the exact word meaning, uh, Jude, what is the exact word meaning of reprobate? The people who are... Uh, uh, who are... Oh, yeah. Those who, are, uh, who are against or who, who are not abiding or who don't... Uh... In, and accept that. Yeah, people yes. with no discipline, with no discipline, or people who do not want to, you know, uh, want to follow certain uh, certain guidelines. Okay, and the people, the predestined people who wanted to uh, live according to the will of God. So the cross is the one which distinguishes these people, reprobates and predestined. And how does it? Uh, how does? Uh, how does uh, uh, it work? Just as on the day of judgment. The good will rejoice upon seeing the cross. 
So even now it can be seen whether one will be saved or lost. So during the judgment day, the people who are in heaven will rejoice when they see the cross. Because of the cross, they have been saved. Even Jesus is telling to Louisa, not only at the time of judgment, even today, even today, we can find out if that person is saved or not by the way in which that person respond to the cross that has been given to them. And Jesus is giving the example. If as the cross present itself to the soul and she embraces it, carries it with resignation and patience, kissing and thanksgiving that hand which is sending it, here is the sign that she is saved. Okay, this is a big distinguisher again, okay? If the cross is given to the soul and if the soul embraces it, carries it with resignation and patience, kissing and thanking the hand which is sending it, that is a sign that soul is saved. On the contrary, as the cross is presented to her, she gets irritated, despises it, and even reaches to the point of offending me. You can say that it's a sign that the soul is heading on the way to the hell. It's a very, it's a very strong statement from Jesus. So when I was thinking about this, I was, I was just asking myself, Oh my Lord, how, how many times I really dreaded this. You know, I want to just run away from the crosses. If once we get this understanding, it absolutely transforms our, you know, our lives altogether. I'm not saying that you go and ask God to give more crosses. That, that is not what uh, the message is. The message is that God allows a certain crosses to everybody. Everyone has to go through the cross. And how do you and me respond to that? Can I say something here if you don't mind? Yeah, please. You know, Simon of Cyrene, mm. he was asked to help uh, Jesus. Right. And he reluctantly took the cross and you know, he was supposed to take the carry the cross. Right. That's a classic example that comes to mind immediately. Right. You know, and we also act like that similarly. When uh, right. something we don't desire to do, we are told to do and we are asked to do. Rather, you know, coaxed or pushed into doing. Right. And, and, and. So that's what came. Yeah. Yeah. Continue, continue, Anthony. Continue, continue. And, and there is a. There is yeah, so there is another, uh, there is an extension of that uh, also is there. Simon of Cyrene was standing with the two of his sons. And Father Daniel explains it. That's what I just wanted to share with you. Simon of Cyrene was an, an, is an African, was an African who came to, for a festival uh, during that time. And he was seeing a procession like many of us would probably had seen the procession in our church or in our, uh, you know, uh, villages. Uh, we, 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 he was a passerby. He was standing there and watching the procession, and he was forced into take the cross, leaving two of his children, two of his sons. He little did he know that uh, you know he was uh, he was specially called to to carry the cross of the King of Kings, and as he was carrying the cross and he looked at the face of Jesus, that turned his man's life. And later in the in the in the in the Bible we see in the in the letter of Paul, these two sons of uh, the Syrian um, uh, of this man later became the bishops of the early church. The bishops of early church. So the cross is not just giving you the the the, the you know uh, the benefit or the reward uh, in heaven, but on the earth. Even my name and your name may or may not be in the, you know, in, you know, written in the book of uh, life, but the name of the man who carried the cross of Jesus is written in the book of life. 
so crosses our attitude towards carrying the cross is is very very important that is what uh, uh, jesus is uh, telling uh, to luisa and to us today and to us today yeah and uh, and uh, the cross tells us cross tells us everything cross is a book that without deception and in clear notes tell you and allow you to distinguish the saint from the sinner the perfect from the imperfect the fervent from the lukewarm this is what the cross does cross distinguishes the saint from the sinner perfect from the imperfect fervent from the lukewarm and the cross is going to be the divider that is what saint paul says in second corinthians 11 24 to 30 five times i received at the hands of the jews the 40 lashes less one three times i was beaten with the rods once i was stoned three times i was shipwrecked night and day i was adrift in at sea on frequent journeys in danger from rivers danger from robbers danger from my own people danger from gentiles danger in the city danger in the wilderness danger at sea danger from false brothers in toil and in hardship through many a sleepless night in hunger and thirst often without food in cold and exposure and apart from other things there is daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches and all these things he went through and he says if i must if i must boast i boast of the things that shows my weakness so saint paul for him these crosses that he went through he embraced it he embraced it and 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 used it as used gave give it to god and used it as an advantage for him advantage for him and i was contemplating on this i came across another beautiful video about a lady who had a, again a vision of uh, jesus i think uh, um, uh, it is again a short video but she talks about the cross how how she handles it i just want you to listen to this uh, video Can you see the screen? Ah, uh, yes. 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 Okay. Restaurant with my kids and Matt I and mean, all of us. Sudden, my world just went pitch black. It was as if I was the only soul that had ever been created, and it was just me and God. And I heard him say to me, he said. What do you have to bring me? And all of a sudden my life just flashed before my eyes. I saw the times of struggle and I saw the fighting and I saw the complaining and it was such wasted time. Those were wasted times that I worried <laughs> that I fretted about things. And the only times that i had so so the only thing that i had to bring god was the times that i stood in faith wow and i and i said to the lord i said god let me go back for the rest of my time on earth <laughs> bring it all bring the struggle bring those times that i have to stand in faith and be strong. Now I don't want that, but it was like bring on the moments that that I have nothing left but to stand strong in who you said you are. Strong with my kids and Matt, I and mean, all of a sudden my world just went pitch black. It was as if I was the only soul that had ever been created and it was just me and God. And I heard him say to me, he said, "What do you have to bring me?" 
And all of a sudden, my life just flashed before my eyes. I saw the times of struggle, and I saw the fighting, and I saw the complaining, and it was such wasted time. Those were wasted times that I worried, <laughs> that I fretted about things. And the only times that I had, so, so the only thing that I had to bring God was the times that I stood in faith. Wow. And I, and I said to the Lord, I said, God, let me go back for the rest of my time on earth. <laughs> bring it all. Bring the struggle. Bring those times that I have to stand in faith and be strong. Now, I don't want that, but it was like bring on the moments that, that I have nothing left, but to stand strong in who you said you are. Strong. See, you know, we don't realize how wasted our lives are when we trip on the crosses that comes in our daily life. I, so when I, I, I didn't plan at all these two things, okay, today. I just came across, I, I felt, uh, you know, this is what, uh, you know, what Lord wanted, to, wanted me to share this evening with you all, with all of us. It is so important, friends, our attitudes. You know, nobody can teach us all these things. We ourselves have to learn. Probably can some guidelines we can give, but God gives us opportunity every day to live, to experience his presence in our life and to embrace him, to thank him for the difficult moments that he is using that moment to, to get the best out of us, our lives for his glory and for, the, for the, and, and for the salvation of our souls. Don't waste crosses. At the same time, bring, you, you can, we can embrace cross once we have the intimacy with God. These are the two points which I wanted to share with you this evening. God bless you. Any any points you wanted to discuss, share? <laughs> so after going through these volumes of uh, Louisa Picaretta's Book of Heaven, I have been having a similar experience that yes, uh, every time I had been complaining uh, why has this happened? Oh my God, I had been planning for something. It has just come the opposite. You know? So what I wanted, so my God, how am I going to face it? So when I, in, many times in my life, I've, I've had such situations. And after coming to this, going through these volumes, I've started seeing all of them back as that uh, lady was saying, bring them all back. And you can do that. Yeah. That is what, uh, you know, uh, the beauty of uh, the book of heaven, uh, Louisa Pekaretta's book, God tells us that, yes, you can bring back not only what you lost in your life, but also all the lives before mm. and after, right? From right. Adam to the one to be born last, right? right. So right. that is the beauty which uh, I came to learn in this uh, book of heaven. So then I said, whenever things come back to me, I said, I behave like this. I felt bad because of such and such thing. And I complained. I was, I was complaining. I was uh, blaming others. And because of you, this happened. So I said, oh, Lord, I forgive. I forgive for that. I forgive those people whom I, I complained about, I, whom I blamed. So, so I make reparation for him. So, so and for all those of my ancestors who have gone through such situations where they lost lost the faith and then they complained and hurt you for all that i make reparation so that is how we can you know in the acts in the rounds you know these are the things which you are, they are expected to do you know after having gone through these uh, volumes it's really a very big uh, eye opener so, so yes so anything happens god is in control so, mm. Recently, also, we had another setback, you know, and my wife was also saying, Why is this happening? And I said, Just, just say, God, you have allowed it. Thank mm. you, thank you. That's all. Mm. So, the moment you say, Why, you know, Jesus tells Louisa, Don't say, Why, 
don't yeah. ask why. Yeah. Just say, yes, yes, Lord, you have allowed it. Thank you. Yes, you may be, your tears may be rolling down your cheeks, but just say, thank you, Lord. Mm. You have allowed it. Thank you. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So this 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 particular attitude to display this attitude, we need to be strong in the Lord. Intimacy. Intimacy is the most important thing. That's why you know we we need to leave everything else for the intimacy of God. I like what uh, Anthony said the other day when uh, when somebody had the vision of God the Father and uh, Father asked uh, God the Father asked him what he wants and the Holy Spirit inside of him uh, reminded I mean prompted him to ask for the intimacy with with the father intimacy with the father there's nothing which can replace uh, you know uh, intimacy with uh, any other spiritual gifts you know it, the most important thing is that being one with the god intimacy is nothing but be one with the god and that is what we should desire we should pray uh, and everything else starts stem from that everything else should stem from that you know uh, so that is uh, the message we wanted to give this evening Thank you, Jude, for adding up to the message. I just want to tell something. Hmm. I, I recently, after hearing all this divine will and all that, I don't know, my meditation on uh, mysteries have become a little more. So today was a joyful mystery when I was saying my morning rosary. The last one, the finding of our Lord Jesus in the temple, and I was meditating. And after that picture came that Mama Mary went to in search. And then I said, Lord, I'm also in the temple of, my body is the temple of God. Can anybody find you in me? And then the thoughts went, you know, that you know, whether I'm growing in love and whether people can see Jesus in me, whether they can find in me also, you know. So now that, you know, these things are taking us deeper. The studies are really taking us deeper. Even the mysteries have become so beautiful. The rosaries have become so beautiful. But today I was just meditating and now when you were talking this again and again, it was saying finding of Lord Jesus in the temple. It was going on coming to me and I just wanted to say this. I don't know whether I'm meditating that rightly or not, but that thought is coming. Lord, I have my body is a temple of God, whether people can see you in me or not. Praise God. Praise God. That is beautiful. That's beautiful, Ramona. Anybody else wanted to share anything? Okay, so we'll close for the evening and we will continue tomorrow uh, the same uh, topic on divine will. Yeah, till then, God bless you all. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Somebody had asked for that video to be sent, uh, Philo. You can send me a WhatsApp. Uh, I can just send that video to you. <laughs>